Uh, next thing we're gonna do really quickly, um, same silver paint, we're gonna take that brush that actually has dried paint on it. You can tell it's pretty hard, it's pretty stiff, it doesn't really wanna do, move or anything, but it's gonna work, so. That's what she said. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, <laughs> we are going to uh, put a very, very small amount of paint on this hard dry brush get it off so when my brush the toy it's just going to leave like a scratch effect and when you see me do it it makes a lot more sense just roll the brush inside of the cap and just get it on the tip like that now that for what we're going to do that's a lot of paint on there so because i'm messy i'm just going to go ahead and knock some off like this you can already tell the stiff brush is making what looks like scratches nice dark wing Normally, you would get wear on all of the edge of this wing. That's where the paint's gonna chip first. So instead of rubbing, rubbing, every time you rub, it's gonna put a lot more paint on there. So I'll go one time and see what happens. Like that. That silver instantly looks like scratch paint. Same thing. Every surface that has an edge would catch something and scratch the paint. So that's what we're gonna do. Sometimes less is more with this kind of stuff. See, as I'm doing it, because the brush is scratchy, it's actually, I'm just, what well, looks like I'm scratching metal off, I'm actually just applying more paint. Yep. So, um, weapons scratch a lot, you know, they take a lot of a beating, so basically, I always hit the weapon up pretty, pretty good. Just the quicker you do it, the more organic it tends to look. You can experiment with different textures of brushes, you'll get different effects, but I like just scratched up. Red paint comes off Gundams as well, so. So, I mean, I, it's probably obvious, but I think what, what we're going for here is you're, under the, you're creating the illusion that your Gundam is a steel figure made out of some sort of steel or iron right. um, who's been in some battle that has some weather damage entering atmosphere. Gundanium. Uh, Jason! Yo. Gundams are made of Gundanium, right? I don't know. Yeah, I guess. It's an alien metal called Gundanium. I'm uh, pretty sure that exists <laughs> in the universe. <laughs> yeah, that arm right there already is just... Look, in two seconds. I mean, it's... I mean, this is a, this is a little $10 figure, and he's going to look so cool. So the feet are going to get a lot of wear. They slide, they hit rocks, they glide across grass, they do all kinds of stuff. So the feet, lots of wear. All up on here, all up on the legs because they're walking on them. So clearly they're going to get the most damage. And try not to leave like anything untouched because you really notice it when it does. You'll have like an inner pocket that's super clean and it looks bad. So this is after the dry silver brush. So all we've done is create bullet holes and add the, the uh, silver scratches. Yeah, you can really see with, um, especially when you do a lot of damage around the bullet holes, it really gives that effect. But just the sil the light picks that silver up on all the edges and really gives it like another dimension. What a difference, yeah, just that does. So the next thing we're gonna do is one of my favorite parts. Um, we're gonna make him really dirty and greasy and we're gonna do that with washes. And normally I use a smaller bottle than this, but I couldn't find one, so we're just gonna use this one. So it basically just has about this much water in it. You know, depends on how heavy you want the wash. You can do a little bit of water, a lot more paint. It's gonna be really heavy. You can do a little more water down, less paint. It's gonna be thinner, you can build it up. This is just regular like India ink or like, this is FW a liquid acrylic. It's very like, thin already almost like a black ink obviously don't use like the enamel like the silver no you, this is a uh, acrylic uh it's water base so don't use testers use just acrylic paint and water because you're going to want to wipe this off of the figure after so i can kind of just judge it the stuff goes pretty far so just that right there i basically just did what would be probably three tablespoons give or take. So what I do is put it in there.
you experiment, you know, like try heavy ones, try thin ones, whatever. Sometimes I regulate it halfway through, but it's all shaken up now. You can wash this with water after, it's totally fine, but just make a designated spray. Right now our guy's all scratched up, but he's still really clean. So we're gonna take our wash bottle, which is right here, and you're really, literally just gonna spray them. You really wanna get it in every crack and crevice you can. Kinda of looks like a lot, but we're gonna wipe most of it off. But yeah, get up in those holes. Again, remember we were talking about the bottom. His feet get dirty. So really spray his feet and all on the inside of his joints. So if you're going for the, you just had an oil leak, this look is good as it is, but. Our guy is basically pretty washed out. Um, what you can do is you can just let it dry like this and it will make it very dirty. Um, and then you can kind of brush wipe it off a little bit if you want. Um, I don't necessarily want them that dirty. I kind of just really want it to all stay in those cracks and grooves and crevices and stuff. So what I do is take just a regular paper towel. I also get Q-tips. Q-tips are awesome for this thing. Get you a handful of these. Cheap. Okay. Uh, and then I just kind of blot off the surface. And this is why you don't use spray paint. Yes, because uh, the acrylic is uh, very forgiving. It comes right off, comes off your hands. So um, yeah, I'll kind of just take his uh, limbs apart. And you notice that black's already getting all those little cracks and grooves and vents. So I kind of just take them and just keep blotting them. Just getting the bulk of all of the uh, excess. Now, if you're doing this on like an action figure, should you uh, do you usually disassemble them, arms, legs? Um, or? No, but action figures are typically not this complicated. They're not this many grooves and stuff, so you don't really have to. Like stormtroopers, what's really fun to do, Boba Fett's, all that kind of stuff. Those guys are pretty simple, and they're also bigger, so you don't have to. You just kind of separate them and get up in there and do what you have to do. Okay, so we got most of um, all the wash off of the uh, dude here, so. With just the paper towel. So I'm gonna go back in with the Q-tip and kind of pick up stuff that I want to get, but you know I don't necessarily want to take it all off. So I'll kind of just we want to keep it in those grooves. So I kind of just do it really quickly. Okay, so this is after the wash. I went ahead and blotted it all up, and you can tell there's just this whole overall layer of dinge and dirt and grime. So you've kind of knocked down all of that plastic with the wash, but then the silver is still popping out from the corner. So you kind of have this, the dullness makes the silver look good, the silver makes the wash look good. Um, but it just looks like all on the feet mostly where we we're talking about, um, you know, lots of weathering, lots of effects, all black paint up in those grooves now. We're seeing all the switches, all the panels awesome so now you can see we went outside so you can really see it but um, you can see the effects of the silver see the effects of the wash you can see it got all the dirt and grime inside the feet wow. now you can really see a lot of the sculpt that you didn't even really notice before but um yeah the wash makes the silver pop the silver makes the wash look dirtier it's a really cool thing and then now all that grime and dirt is inside of our bullet holes so now his battle damage is old yeah, and this the realism just from this on this little figure. I mean, we'll do the side by side Hands here in a little bit, but yeah. I mean, it's it's amazing how much more realistic this thing looks now. But this all took maybe fifteen or twenty minutes collectively, twenty minutes maybe all together, and that's with like paint drying everything. So yeah, these are all products you can get for a couple dollars at the store, and we just took a little ten dollar figure and it made him a little bit more next level. Freaking awesome! Nice. So this is a guy we did on the episode when we fe featured Michael's collection, but uh, going back to kind of just address some of this right, like uh, after we've shown how to do these now. I did. I found this effect stuff on the internet where it's basically like um, iron powder and acrylic paint, and you can paint the whole thing with basically liquid metal, and then it dries, and then it comes with another solution that actually um, 
rusts the metal in the paint and it does it very quickly. So that's why that's actual rust. It's um, just a rusting effect you can get on the internet. Um, really cheap, really effective. More bullet holes, weathering. This is really like taking a lot of time and kind of just putting all of the effects into one. Yeah, this kit. guy was pretty as, as kind of as generic and yeah, flat looked, as the original like ones, this, but bigger. Yeah. yeah, so he was kind of... That's one that's just painted without damage, but he looked just like that, but cleaner. I mean, this guy looks cool, but you can definitely tell that it's that he's plastic, right. I think. And then you look at this guy, which who's made out of the same material. Exact same looks material. Looks like he's been made out of steel or iron mm -hmm. and has been in the water for a while. I mean, it's just amazing that that's a plastic figure. Yeah, I was going for like a German thing. So lots of rain, lots of mud, you know, lots of rust. He would have got a lot of exposure. Um, this is the rust effect stuff we were talking about. It's made by a company called uh, Modern Options. It's a iron base fur. So when you open it, it's just clear acrylic with um, iron powder in it. So it looks gray. It feels very like chalky. Um, it's just acrylic paint. It's pretty safe. This is the uh, same company, it comes in a two pack. So you get the, this and this is the stuff that rusts it. Modern options, sophisticated finishes, rust finish. So I poured this, I poured mine into a spray bottle. That way I could mist it almost like rain and it really gets all of the metal done. It also saves it so you're not using all of it. Cool. Same company, Modern Options. They do another one called, it's copper with patina green. So this is the same acrylic paint It's a little separated, but that is, it's copper. It's copper flakes inside of acrylic paint. It just hasn't been mixed up yet. So it comes out it's shiny, like, like a penny. Yep. And then this is the same stuff that goes with the rust, but this actually oxidizes the copper into a, um, a green, just like this effect. So if you're doing ships or sea or any kind of ocean stuff, and you really want to get that um, salt water patina kind of look, that's what you're looking for. So here's an example of doing all of these same effects, but on not a model, but um, just a toy. So this is a 1999 Hasbro um, speeder bike. Um, they were kind of inexpensive, nothing crazy, but I disassembled it. I think it's like six screws, disassembled the whole thing, repainted the panels to be um, a little bit more true to the movie. All of these scratches are done with a Dremel, just like you were seeing before, but instead of holes, I actually drag it like limbs. Um, limbs would hit, scratch it, same. You can see the wash effects here. So more grease, more grime, it pulls out all these cracks and crevices. From there, I went, um, this is the rust effect. You can actually see where I brushed the metal on with a brush. Um, that's copper testers paint. So this is just a toy, but it really makes it look a lot different. Um, silver testers, copper testers. Um, Little, it's the little details that really Testers help. Testers is the brand name again. For Testers is the enamel, enamel. yes. Enamel. Um, burned and weathered the fabric poncho that it came with really makes a big difference. Um, more silver dry brush. I actually take a lighter and hit the lighter with it and cause carbon scoring so it really gives that burned effect. Yeah. More rust the bottom is really where the rust wow. comes in so you would get moisture in the where the hoses would connect into the ports here that's, that's, on indoor for sure. that's where the water builds up or all these corners so you really kind of hit the corners um, where water collects for the rust and this is all that rust effects stuff um, you can really tell it looks great, but and this looks like it, this does look like the more stuff dry brushed that would come out of a out of a movie, like the one they would use the scale to film it. I mean, this is like a forty dollar toy with maybe eight hours of paint into it and rebuild. And, and just the difference that it makes, the, just that the rust makes that look like met like like steel or right. metal. You know, it makes a dramatic difference, and it's a ten dollar thing on e on uh, Amazon. But yeah, more just copper rods. I mean, all these little details make a really big difference. Brushed metal here, a lot of, uh, you get a lot of hit and wear from the front. Um, limbs are gonna hit the front. So you kind of want it all to brush back like the way the speeder would operate. Wow, that's amazing. That, that's brilliant, that piece there. And here we captured Jason Bacoli in his native habitat. <laughs> Uh, you want to 
can't stand. Who says action figures are just for kids? <laughs> hey, I was bored in here. I gotta do something. So now we're switching over to uh, Jason's builds that he's done. Up, kind of show, show some new techniques. The beard's grown out since the last episode. <laughs> <laughs> This was the one in your episode that was in pieces on the table for, for, for those. Go back and watch them. All right, so basically these are kits that I use this powder to weather. It's really easy to do. You can get it at the hobby store. It's pretty much like makeup. You just wipe it on there with this little applicator, and you get really cool weathering effects. You're just going to make sure to top it off with some clear coat. Otherwise, the stuff will just come off when you handle it. Flat clear coat? Yep. guy here, I don't know if you guys can see this detail of painting this pilot, but <laughs> that's crazy, it's like brain surgery, I mean, because that dude here, here's my thumb, next to that dude. Where are those little bastards? Okay, so these are the same kit, built two different ways. <laughs> 